Thanks for joining us this evening. We'll start with Tennessee offensive line coach Glenn Ellerby to ask a question to coach. Hit the raise your hand function. We'll start with David Oven. Uh, Glenn, how would you describe what you inherited uh, with this group uh, of linemen and, and uh, any guys standing out so far for you uh, What about midway through spring? Uh, that's an interesting combination that you got um, a lot of uh, older guys that have played ball and they're really uh, savvy with a, a Cade Mays, a Jerome Carvin, um, guys that kind of understand the game on a, a little bit different level. And then a bunch of young guys that um, play really hard, give unbelievable effort, but just have to learn um, the game. You know, just have to learn where to put their hands, how, how to step, um, you know, what it – what the defense is trying to do when, when you see what's going on and try to do that at tempo as well. So it's um, it's a good blend, man. Just really right now trying to get the older guys to help bring those younger guys along and all of us um, get to the point that we want to be at. Eric Kane and Patrick Brown. Hey, Glenn, I know Kay Mays is working kind of in some different spots, right side, left side, guard, tackle. But from what you've seen from uh, him and being an upperclassman the first couple of weeks of spring, do you see him more as a better fit at guard or tackle in this offense? Man, uh, that, that's a great question. Um, you know, really, at the end of the day, it's a matter of where he fits best uh, with all the other guys. Um, he, he's such a, a talented guy. Um, and he has played so many different positions, and he knows uh, how to use his body, how to move it, um, that really at the end of the day, he's probably going to slide in there where it, it makes us best. If that's a tackle, um, awesome, then we're rolling down the road. If it's a guard, awesome, that's where we'll go. Uh, and to his credit, man, he, he's, he has had to do a bunch of different positions, had to move a lot, and it's just been for – for us, for the team, for doing whatever matters, and uh, just and really, really appreciate that that part of him. One, because I can move him, and two, just the way he's responded to it. Glenn, uh, one guy I don't think you've mentioned yet is is Dane Davis, who came here as a walk on. What, what do you like about him, and, and kind of how is that that left tackle situation shaping up with him, and, and maybe Kate and even K Ron too. Yeah, uh, Dane, one, uh, studies the game. Now, I'm not sure there's been a guy that's been in extra, especially uh, there in the beginning to try to learn the offense. He, um, you know, a great example, you know, kind of talking different pass set stuff, and he was trying to play to some of his strengths uh, and change the set and respect the guy that, you know, understands where he's good and, uh, what he has to do, and he plays with great effort and has a great attitude and, and um, has done a really good job at left tackle, uh, just as solid as can be. Um, Bert, one, has an unbelievable personality, man, really, really uh, enjoyable guy to be around, has great talent. I mean, he can twitch and pop and uh, do some things run game-wise and do some things body position-wise, pass set-wise. Um, you know, I think trying to find um, the fine line was, you know, his knees, his uh, um, motor every single play. Um, you know, I think that's kind of where we got to get to with him. Um, but cool thing is they're both competing. They're both kind of rolling, taking reps. Um, and, man, let, let the best man win, but also let the uh, let those guys kind of sharpen each other, kind of push each other competition wins. Brent Hubs, then Ben McKee. Yeah, Coach. A couple of questions. One, are, are you where you thought you would be at this point in spring with this group? Are you a, a little further ahead, or are you a little further behind? And, and then, secondly, what's the key to to making the offensive line go in this offense? What what do you need to What do you need out of an offensive lineman most in this offense? All right. Uh, gosh, where we're at, you know, I, I think we're in a good spot. Um, the best tell of that will be when we get to scrimmage the second time, it's always where you make the biggest jump because they get to see um, how to play with tempo, where they were uh, slowing themselves down inadvertently that you don't have to be in a panic, but everything is smooth and smooth as fast. Um, just 
knowing their awareness, I think that's where we'll probably make the biggest jump. And man, I can tell you where we're on track or we're not. Uh, at that point, if we don't make the jump, then we got ways to go. Uh, but we'll we'll see there. Um, you know, I, and then, gosh, yeah, I, I kind of got off on a tangent there. It's really embarrassing. What was the second part of the question? We'll just, that one more time. Just, just what, what do you? I mean, for you, what what's what is needed to be a successful offensive lineman in this offense? Is it power? Is I mean, I I know some of the physical stuff, but what do you say? I've got to have the following three or four things for a guy to be successful on my offensive line in this offense? Sure. I, crazy enough, I do think it starts mentally. Guys have to be able to process fast. It, it is a quick tempo offense or fast tempo or whatever you want to call it. Um, the play's coming in, four ID in the front, and the ball snapped. If you can't process, um, you're going to struggle. I think in this league and the way that we do um, – run the ball, you, you, you got to be some, a guy with wide hips and physicality, man. You're like, you, you don't like trying to knock somebody off the ball and don't enjoy moving the man from point A to point B, all the cliches you can think of and um, have the ability to run block. Uh, man, you're not going to be very good in this offense either. You got to be a tough guy. Um, after that, I think it comes down to redirection because at some point you're going to get isolated and pass sets or you're going to get uh, in the run game, you're going to be in a man block and you have to change direction. Um, so, it, like, for me, man, can you think? Are you a tough dude that can go move some guys off the ball? And can you redirect? Can you do those three things? And um, then you start to start to build from there. Yeah, Coach, I wanted to ask you about some of the younger guys uh, this spring. Just what have you seen from Cooper Mays and Javante Spragans and, and then your early enrollee, William Parker? Yeah, um, Coop has made a – Big time leap. I think one in his footwork and base. Uh, gosh, you go back and look at the first couple of practices, just where he was in the run game to where he is now. Um, he enjoys it every single day. The guy has juice, has energy. Um, I think he is trying to fix or be a better player every day. I mean, his technique, body position, hands, uh, whatever it is you ask, he tries to go work on it and tries to get it fixed. Sprags has a one of the guys that, like I was talking about with young guys, unreal motor. Guy plays a thousand miles an hour. Um, I think he's got it in ways, not necessarily slow down, but learn how to play that fast with technique, with a first step, second step, hands, understand where I'm trying to put the defender and keep my leverage. Um, he is going to be a great player, man. And really, all, all those guys, you look at where they were, the young guys from day one, but right now they've made leaps and bounds. It's just got to keep going that way. And then Griff um, hasn't made as big a jump, but, man, what an unbelievable – it's hard when you first come in, but unbelievable kid, like great human being, plays freaky fast, like freaky fast. He just is raw to the game, um, has, has to learn – what to do, how to do it. Um, but the fact that he'll play so fast when the ball snapped, he'll be just fine. Two more questions. Gustavo, then Eric Kane. Coach, you mentioned about scrimmage, you know, and developing your unit. Do you how do you what do you expect from this week, you know, scrimmage in terms of building your offensive line, you know, in this point of the screen uh, of the spring practices? Uh, man, we grade everything, so I kind of let the, their performance dictate who gets to play. That's the way we've done from workout spring to uh, every spring practice we roll out there. We grade every single rep. The guy that grades the best, uh, he's the guy who gets to start. So if that's kind of where you're leading on that part of it, dude, they're in control of their own destiny on who ends up being uh, the starting five. As far as where they are at the end of the scrimmage, man, I hope one, tempo is super clean. I hope our assignments uh, are a lot better. It kind of goes back into that processing piece of it. And then just continue to build on the physical part of it, be able to go hammer the ball when we want to go hammer it. Hey, Glenn, you mentioned uh, Jerome Carver being a veteran guy and how beneficial it is to have guys like he and Cade Mays in camp a little earlier. But – Oh, how has he adapted to the new scheme? And is he a viable option for you guys snapping the football this year? He is. He's uh, he's played guard and center. Uh, he's rolled through. Um, I, 
he's ad adapted really well. He is highly intelligent. Um, doesn't take but one time to tell him something, and he has it. Um, and I tell you, he's got a gift for kind of explaining in a unique way. Um, sometimes the way I'm trying to explain something, I'll say, hey, you know, it, it's kind of like look at it this way. And he'll explain it to Sprags or explain it to Coop or explain it to whoever it be. And um, the guy's really a good teacher as long as as well. And a lot of that comes from how smart he is. Uh, and really the fact that he cares and he has a genuineness to him that guys listen to him. Um, you know, I've, I, I recruited JC out of uh, high school. And man, I was really, really glad to get to coach him again, or I, I say again, to get to coach him. And uh, he, he's been awesome, man. Can't say enough good things about him at all. Thank you, coach, for your time. Thank you, guys. We'll have Coach Gardner here shortly.